Hello, everyone, and welcome to Africa Fire Mission's weekly virtual training session. My name is Mike. I'm the program's director here at Africa Fire Mission, and we're so happy that you took time out of your busy schedules to join us for today's training. Today, we're joined by Michael Dwyer. He's going to be talking about fire service advocacy, uh, so we'll get to him in just a few moments. Before we get started, just a couple administrative items. Uh, if you stick around for at least 70% of today's training, which is usually about 40 or 45 minutes, uh, you'll receive a certificate of attendance. If for some reason you get cut off or you can't stay for that whole time, uh, keep your eye out in the chat where I'll be dropping a link to our Google Drive where you'll be able to find today's presentation along with all the trainings that we've done previously this year. If you go to that Google form, watch the YouTube video of the recording and uh, fill out a couple questions. I can get you a certificate of attendance for those classes as well. So I encourage you to check that out. Those are also available from our website at www.africafiremission.org. So please check out the different resources that we have available to you there. Before we get started with today's training, I'm going to pass things over to Jose Najiri. Jose is Africa Fire Mission's fire safety officer. He's going to get us started with a few words of encouragement. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Chief Mike. And um, I'm so excited to have Michael Dwyer around. And um, I am so grateful to just listen to what he has in store for us today. And I would invite you to uh, uh, ask your colleagues to join in and uh, just to uh, fasten the safety belt for today's class. So what's my encouragement for today? You know, as I woke up today, this morning, I was like, what, what really governs, what really governs me? What really helps me or guides me to make decisions as I move on? And I remember the one uh, uh, statement that we usually say, I'm in a club that's called the Rotary, uh, Rotary International. And before any meeting, we, we, we go, we go with these four, uh, items, and I want us. I want to share it with you guys so that you can reflect on it, and uh, you can even, when you find yourself needing to make a hard decision or a decision that will help you go forward, you might use this to go forward. So we call it the four-way test, and it goes like: of the things we, of the things we think, say, or do. Is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? Those four items will help you, guide you, and will give you your true north as you get to make a decision. Please allow me to actually repeat it again. Of the things we think, say with our mouths, do with our hands, is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? Even as we continue today's lesson, Please think on those items. Back to you, Chief Mike. Thank you so much, Jose. We always appreciate you being here with us uh, and all the work that you do to help out and advocate for firefighters throughout all of Africa. Before we get started with the class, I just wanted to extend an invitation to you all at the top of the hour. We'll wrap up the formal portion of today's training, uh, and then we're going to pass things back over to Jose for our tea time. Tea time is a time where you can ask questions about today's training or discuss anything you'd like uh, that has to do with the fire service. It's a great opportunity for some networking uh, to get to know some of the other firefighters working throughout Africa. So if you have the time in the bundles, I would invite you all to please stick around for that as well. At this time, I'm going to pass things over to uh, Michael Dwyer. And we'll get started with today's training. Well, good morning, everybody. I'm going to there's my mouth. There we are. Good morning, Mike. Can you see my screen okay? Yep, looks good. Oh, perfect. Well, again, good morning um, to everyone um, uh, across Africa. 
I can't not put in words how honored I am uh, to be able to share a little bit of what I've learned about advocacy um, with people so far away. Um, I, I'm literally about 8,500 miles away from you this morning. And <laughs> I got to remember that in my world, it's this morning. And in your world, of course, it's this afternoon. I put a big note about that. I got to remember I keep that straight. Uh, but just, boy, just thank you so much to Mike and to Jose, two very, very good friends and men that I have so much respect for. And and in the broader sense, uh, to Africa Fire Mission for both the opportunity to present this morning and, and also certainly for the uh, for the trip that I was blessed to go on in November. Um, so uh, life is really, really good. And this part of the world is really, really hot. <laughs> and it's going to we have humidity and it, you just feel like you're wearing a sauna, a, a bathtub as you walk around. And, and that's good. The corn loves it. Um, the, the cows, which in some parts of my world, we have more cows than we do people. Um, it, so the corn is really loving it and the, the cows are really hating it. Um, but for the next uh, 40 minutes, 45 minutes or so, I'm going to talk about uh, something that I just really, really do enjoy um, and really have been blessed um, to, to make a difference with. Um, so this is kind of an intro to influence. Um, I'm going to share just a couple of tidbits, basics, some stories, um, some of which you'll get tired of hearing, um, but just really stories that have had a tremendous impact on my life uh, inside of the fire service, um, but outside of the fire service too. I've been able to do things and meet people, um, amazing experiences, both inside of fire service uh, certainly the Africa fire mission trip to Nairobi was at the top, is, is at the top of that list. But also in the context of advocacy, just being uh, somebody who was blessed to have a little bit of influence, um, have, have just opened the door to just um, amazing experiences. And Mike, if it's okay, we'll extend our program to eight hours today and I'll tell you all the stories and all the experiences. Now, there won't be anybody left on the meeting, but that's okay. I, I, I love to hear myself talk. And, um, but I'll try to go through this in, in a reasonable amount of time. Again, I'm about 8,500 miles away. Um, and uh, so to give you a sense, the, pl the place that I'm in is a, a village called Arlington, and it's about 30 miles away from the literal geographic center of the United States. So if you can picture the United States as kind of the palm of your hand, we're just right smack in the middle. Um, and again, it's really, really hot today, but um, but also really good. We have our county fair in town today, um, and there'll be about 6,000 people tonight watching the biggest event of our town, and that's called the Demo Derby. So uh, the short version is that's about 30 old guys spend about several thousand American dollars on their cars for the opportunity to bang into each other. And the one that bangs into each other the most and makes it through without their car dying, they can win as much as 100 American dollars. Now, keep in mind that they spent several thousand American dollars just to get that car ready, but that's the big social event of the year for me. Um, in addition to being able to present to you today, I've been a volunteer firefighter and an EMT for 40 years. Um, and uh, in, in our little community. And, and that volunteer piece, when I spoke in um, Nairobi, was really interesting. Uh, I, I don't know that um, there's many volun true volunteers in Africa, but I also think um, that particularly in rural America and in rural Africa, um, that heart of a volunteer is really what drives fire service in so many ways. Uh, also been involved in advocacy on the state and national level in the United States for about 24 years. I'll tell a story in a minute how that kind of started. And um, and it, it again, it's been a fascinating uh, journey. Um, and just to give you a little bit of background, I took this photograph yesterday. That's our beautiful capital, uh, Nebraska. Uh, that's where all the people in our province, Nebraska, get together and argue about stuff. They have a beautiful building, one of the nicest state capitals in the in the United States. Uh, but we also have a really open uh, process, even more in Nebraska than we than the rest of the states. 
Um, the last picture on the bottom shows a committee hearing. And, and essentially, that's just a room where you have senators or lawmakers on one side, and then you have the audience and speakers on the other. And anyone, anyone in the state of Nebraska can come to one of those hearings, and everything, every bill we do has to go through that hearing. And anybody can just walk up. You can't really see it, but there's a little desk in the middle, and you just sign up. And all you have to do is put your address down. You walk up and say, hey— this is really, really important, and this is why, or this is a horrible idea. What are you thinking? Um, and anybody in Nebraska has the opportunity to participate in that, and I just love that system, and uh, and again, just really, really blessed to be able to do that. As I mentioned, I'm also a professional photographer, um, so I kind of meld those two uh, worlds together. The top photograph is um, I had a bill signing with my uh, myself and Governor Pillen, who's the governor of our promise, province, excuse me, uh, the middle photograph is former Vice President Mike Pence, who was in our state, and I was blessed to be able to photograph him. Uh, and in the bottom photograph is my lovely wife and I with Nikki Haley, who was the UN ambassador uh, for the United States and also was a presidential candidate um, for the United States in our country. Uh, again, the only thing I want you to remember is not that I'm some kind of cool guy, but um, that one of the things that both photography and advocacy has brought is just really the opportunity to meet some amazing people that do good stuff. Uh, real quickly, I'll just share some of the photographs from the Nairobi trip. Uh, again, just blessed beyond measure to be able to participate in that place with that team uh, and to be able to photograph it. I told the group and I tell myself uh, and, and anybody that'll listen constantly that one of the richest experiences photographically of my life for two reasons. One, um, good teaching, good people, amazing trainers, um, but also uh, because of the people of Kenya. Um, quickly, I was blessed to go on a safari at the end of the tour, which everybody that comes to Africa should do, and uh, and just mountaintop experiences and, and witnessing what God has created halfway across the world. Wonderful. And, and again, the Kenyan people, um, the African people were such an inspiration, um, beautiful people. And, and I mean that as a photographer, but also beautiful people as dedicated servants um, who really are very, very happy and, and want to do the right stuff. So that's a little background on me, way too long. What I'm going to try to do this morning is just the basics. Um, and, and I hope and I encourage some questions uh, at the end of the program um, that this is just the basics and and specifically that there's certainly differences in the structure of how the United States works and how the individual providences in provinces excuse me in Africa work it and I I understand and acknowledge and respect that on the other hand I do think that in in the heading of advocacy there are some very basic um, rules if you will or lessons that I've learned uh, over the course of being able to do this for a while. And um, one of those is this is about building relationships. This is about the same things that you do in your community uh, with your friends, with your family, with your extended family, that you're just extending that family to people who have influence. Um, and the first thing that and, and the foundational thing that I believe about advocacy is that building those relationships, talking to people, interacting with people, showing up at different events and things with people of influence um, builds that relationship that someday, at some point, I've been able to use to be able to influence the influencers. Uh, and maybe that's a way to look at this, that that we aren't, um, I'm not an elected official. I have been, but um, but in this particular season, I, I have no office. I have no authority to do anything. Um, but I have been blessed through advocacy to be able to influence individuals and um, that do have authority, that can make decisions on both a, a local level uh, and also a state level, um, and really just in the last two years or so more, even on a national level. So, um, but the heart of advocacy really is, is just knowing the people and being able to build a relationship. So it's not just, 
you know, some dude from Arlington, Nebraska, in the middle of nowhere, banging his fist on the table saying, hey, we got to do this. But they, most of the people know me and they understand what I'm doing. And, and uh, with that, I can make maybe a little bit more of an influence. Advocacy is teaching and learning. You have to be a good teacher. You have to be able to explain what your issues are, what your story is. And I'll get to that in a minute. But also you have to be able to learn in that relationship from the people that have influence, that have authority. How do how do I how do I understand where they are at, what they see, um, and maybe use that that opportunity to teach them a little bit about what I see in my area, in my province, in my world, in my the struggles that we have and the the, the real opportunity, the joys that we have too. Um, so teaching is really big thing. A piece of that, of course, is just asking, asking questions instead of what what I tend to do. And today's a great example of that. I just talk and I just keep talking and talk, talk, talk. Um, but part of advocacy is asking them questions. Where is this issue at? Is this issue mature enough that we can get something done? What are your positions about this? What are your colleagues' positions about this? And then being willing to do the hardest thing that I have ever done in my life, beyond fire service, beyond politics and advocacy and all of that other stuff, the hardest thing that I have to do in my life is shut up, Michael. Just be quiet. Just listen. And, and, and that's really a, an important piece of this that, I, and that, again, I can really struggle with. And it is work, um, but it's also fun. Um, I think if you approach it um, a little bit um, like a fire scene, um, like, uh, and maybe it's not the worst fire scene you've ever seen, although there are days that it seems like, um, but if, if you approach it as this is work, and if I'm gonna be a worker, I have to have a set of skills that helps me be able to create whatever I'm trying to create. I have to have those skills and I need some of those tools. If you approach it as work, then not only will you be more effective and, and be able to do more things, but it also becomes more fun. Just like, uh, and we in America pride ourselves at having fun at work. And, and but, but there also can be a lot of fun in, in really, really good work. Uh, it's important. Um, it's it, this is an opportunity to do important stuff in a in a bigger and broader sense, even than the most important thing that you do, and that's protecting the people of your community. Uh, it's not more important than that, um, but it is a piece of that that's really important to be able to help you serve the people in your community, which of course is the ultimate goal, the end game, if you will. On the other hand, it can be incredibly frustrating. Um, not unusual for me to have three or four losses before I get a win. A dozen conversations before I see movement. A dozen uh, interactions, a dozen emails, a dozen handshakes before we see movement. Um, one of the issues that, that we're experiencing in the States is a real shortage of, of person power, of people to be actually be able to do fire service. And, um, and, and that's an example of just a really uh, long game, um, frustrating kind of uh, environment. And it, um, it, it, it can be uh, very, 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 very important, but also very uh, frustrating. In that, um, with that said, w one of the tricks, if you will, that I've always believed really strongly is that uh, the ability to see that horizon, to be able to see, okay, this is where I'm going, um, and these are maybe some of the small steps that, again, can be really frustrating, 
Um, but it, as long as I keep taking those steps, there's a pretty good chance uh, that I'll be able to do that. Quick story. Um, in, gosh, this has been 20, 25 years ago. Um, I was a firefighter, didn't really have any connections beyond uh, our little village. I was just showing up for fire calls and showing up for EMT calls and, and doing that and really didn't see anything beyond that. Um, but a fellow firefighter from another village said, hey, could you help us on this issue? Uh, I had been on a couple of boards here in our town and, um, and I said, well, I'll do anything I can. And so what we were trying to do was get a little bit of mental health coverage for firefighters who had been through really tough calls. I had experienced a couple of those. And in my case, I'm sure that everyone on the Zoom can, can relate to the calls that you've had that were really tough. So we were just trying to get a little bit of uh, governmental help, insurance help with those calls. Um, and it was a battle. Um, we started with meetings and how might this look and where could we go? And then we created a little bit of a kind of the notes for a bill or a law that would uh, maybe facilitate this or help this a little bit. And then we had to go find a senator who would actually introduce the bill. And that was a battle. And I had a couple of people, including a neighbor that was a senator, and, and he was real clear, Michael, fight the good fight, but this just isn't going to pass. It's just not going to pass. You don't, nobody's going to support this because it costs money and it looks like this and nobody likes it. So good luck, but it's not going to pass. And I said, okay, well, wish me luck. And, um, so we kept pushing and, and in Nebraska, it has to go through four stages of debate before it ever gets to our governor to be signed into a law. So we went through the first piece, which is a committee hearing, and we yell and you know, we sat at that table I showed you and we do good stuff and we're making the case and 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 then the committee says, okay, thank you, bye. Um, and then we didn't hear. Um, they have to vote it to go to the, to the whole legislature. Sorry to get into the weeds, but um, so all, lo and behold, all of a sudden we heard that, oh my gosh, they voted it to go to the legislature. Oh, I can't believe that happened. That's amazing. So then we go through three stages of debate in the legislature. And the first stage was really intense. People didn't like it. People liked it. Um, the whole volunteer thing um, was important. And, and then all of a sudden it, it got past that stage and then it got past the second stage and then it got to that third stage. And all of a sudden it was in the governor's hands. Um, so I got the opportunity to call our governor and have actually two calls and say, hey, governor, this is really important. You really need to do this. And well, yeah, Michael, but this and that, and I don't know, and I don't know. And, and as it turned out, about four days after that, he signed the bill. And now in Nebraska, we have some mental health support for firefighters, specifically post-traumatic stress disorders and symptoms um, that really helps, uh, particularly the volunteers in Nebraska, um, and has become a model for many states in the rest of the country. And the only thing I want you to hear from all of this is that that experience was just inspiring. The fact that this little guy from a little town, a little village in the middle of nowhere could be able to work on something like that and actually see it come to fruition. I was hooked. I, I was like I was like a kid in a candy store. I just couldn't get enough of it. And, and that's kind of been the 24 years that I've spent doing advocacy. And what I wanted to tell you is that if you can tell your story, there is no one else in Africa that can tell your story like you can. And if you don't get anything else out of the time we have together, advocacy is telling your story. That's really the heart of what you're doing. If you can build a relationships and recognize that it's going to be a long-term game, this is one game, this is a season, and you can tell your story both factually, I don't want to get too far into the weeds, but factually and passionately, then I promise you, you, you can have some success. Tell your story um, with the passion and purpose that, that you can understand um, and tell it directly. You got to tell it a lot of times. You got to tell it a lot of times. Um, when I go up, I kind of like today, I have my little background and I tell that until it, everybody kind of rolls their eyes and I, it's stupid. But if you can tell your story with passion, 
um, that really, really can translate into a mission. Um, just like in fires, you have a mission to put that fire out. Um, and sometimes the stuff I was doing yesterday at our Capitol was a mission to put out a fire that was going to change the way that that fire gets paid or gets structured in Nebraska. I think um, that was my mission yesterday. Um, so I spent two and a half hours in my vehicle and then six hours at the Capitol waiting for my three minutes, my three minutes to talk to senators about my mission. But if that's your mission, you can accomplish that. No question. Oh, uh, love the process in Nairobi. So I was a little bit surprised when we taught the Fire and EMS Symposium in Nairobi uh, that they had an advocacy event, if you will, right there at the symposium. And there was a speaker. And if I remember right, uh, there was an issue that they were going to reduce this, the funding for fire and EMS training. And this was a great open forum, not unlike the committee hearings that I've been talking about that we do in the States. There was a speaker. And if you can see in the back of the top left slide, he has some some points up there and this is how this would work and then he was presenting ideas and then the people at the symposium regular people um, just like me in the states you in in this case Nairobi but in Africa had the opportunity to say hey this is really good or this is really bad we really need this these dollars uh, to be able to train and and the structure around that to be able to allow people to um, to get the kind of training that they need to be effective responders for the benefit of the citizens, in this case, the citizens of Kenya, um, but certainly in the broader sense, the same ideas apply. And, um, so the only point I want you to hear here is that that that, that is the same um, in, I think I'm really convinced in most of the free world, certainly there's areas of the country, or the world, excuse me, you just can't do this, but uh, but certainly my experience uh, in and around Nairobi and Kenya was that, that it, although the details, the people, the process, the players is, is different, um, the, really the, the essence of uh, advocacy is still the same. Uh, there's a lot of visitors there, uh, people, the governor was there, people from the chamber, uh, fire officials. Um, and it it just, I was even texting um, our, our, we called it a lobbyist who's paid to do this kind of advocacy thing. I was even texting Jerry and it happened to be in the middle of the night and he wasn't very happy about that. But um, but I was texting him and, hey, you know, this is, this is kind of the same thing. It's the same process of telling your story, building relationships, and really thinking of this in terms of the long game um, that really, really helps. Um, under, again, understanding the process is so important. Um, I can't, from 8,000 miles away, really explain with any fairness what your process is. But I, I do want to stress that understanding what that process is, is really important. Again, to use the analogy of, um, let's say you're gonna run a pumper on a scene, you have to understand how that pumper works you have to understand how do you get water from over there to where it needs to be. And we joke here, you have to get the hot stuff on the white stuff, on the red stuff. Um, and excuse me, I said, I'm sorry. I, I, I goofed up my only joke I had in my presentation. You have to get the wet stuff on the hot stuff. That's what I was trying to say. Um, and that's the process that we understand in fire. It's, it's kind of the same idea in, at, in advocacy. Um, so, Spend some time, if you haven't already, um, just learning and studying, um, do some videos, see what anything is available online about what the process is. In America, we have people that will teach that. And I think if you search hard enough, I would, I would guess, I don't know this, but I would guess that in Africa, you probably have that same opportunity to connect with some people that, that are willing to mentor you and kind of show you along through the process. And particularly from what I know of Kenyan politics, their, their elected officials are very interactive. They want to be out there. There was a lot of them there at our graduation at the fire and, and at the symposium. So they, they want to be there and they want to connect with you. 
Um, so use that opportunity, not only to build a relationship, but just to understand the process. And that kind of circles around back to that, that educational thing. Um, same thing. Uh, building relationships, is, it's, it's a job. Uh, just like it takes a while at a fire scene, we need to roll up and squirt water on the fire immediately. Well, it doesn't happen quite that way. Um, building relationships and advocacy, is it takes time. It just takes amount of listening and connecting with those quote unquote players. Um, and it just takes several repetitions of that um, in getting to know them repeatedly so that when you see them, oh, hi, Jose. Hey, Jose, how you doing? What's going on? What's the latest? Um, Building relationships isn't just warm and fuzzy stuff, which is good, um, but it also, it's work. It just takes time and repetition to be able to really broaden those relationships to the point that you can look towards that end game. You can maybe have the opportunity to teach and um, and really uh, explain in a broader way the stuff to them. Um Telling your story um, is is interesting because it's it it all of us love to do that. The people of Kenya that I met love to do that. They love to tell about their village and about their struggles and about their history and fire service. We all love to do that, and that's perfect. In America, in the state of Nebraska. Anybody that says, hey, I'd like to go down and, and we call it testifying, but go down and tell your story. That's really all the testimony is. Uh, I always really encourage that. Um, but I also remind them that uh, you both in just casual relationships, when you bump into somebody at a training or a symposium or in your village, those are little short minutes of time. So you have to be kind of direct. Um, and to really make those moments, and a lot of times the moments are, are small, you have to prepare and, and to a certain extent rehearse your story. Um, so again, it's principle that, it, that it's really fun and really rewarding, but it's also work and telling your story, crafting that story um, so that you can be concise, but also be really um, inspiring. Don't be afraid to get passionate about this. If you had a really tough fire or if you had a really successful fire, don't be afraid to be passionate and engaged and and the Kenya people are so good with that. And I'm assuming that everybody in Africa is like that. You really do have an opportunity, but but you have to do it in a, in a, in a crafting kind of way, the same way that you might approach a regular work if you're crafting something or if you're raising an animal uh, or, or if you're working a fire. It's more than just being passionate. You have to be accurate and tell your story and a uh, piece of that is understanding the issues, um, being educated, being willing to do the research so that you really know in a in a broader sense what those issues are and honestly what the potential to change whatever it is you're advocating for. Um, if, if it's if it's really an uphill battle, the way I ex explained the story uh, with the mental health issue that we uh, were able to largely solve, um, it, it 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 really can be it, it's a long term game and understanding all of the complexity sometimes the the really details of whatever issue you're working on. Um, do your homework. And maybe that's a better way of saying it and a less winded way of saying it than I am. And just understanding the issues and really doing your homework and making sure that that works. Um, in the United States, um, the issues that we typically have, and I would guess that some of these are the same in Africa. Um, maybe the details are different. Um, but from my limited time uh, in Nairobi, I, I did get the sense that the issues that you have in many sense ways are the same. Uh, we're short of workers. Um, 72 percent or almost three out of every four workers in the United States that do fire an EMS are volunteers. People like me that don't get paid anything um, to do this. 
and we wear a little pager radio thing on our hips and we have now we have things on our phone that light up when we have a call and and i drop what i'm doing and run off to the fire hall and, and do fires and and again for three out of four places in in the states they're protected by uh, just volunteers like us uh, and the shortages are immense and i know that the situation in africa is much different than that um, but generally speaking for this industry, it, it is a very people driven business and we have to have workers, uh, regulations, both positive regulations that support fire and EMS and negative res regulations that limit what we can and can't do. Um, it is in, in the way that it surrounds the work that we do. And there should be some regulations because we have tremendous responsibilities, on the other hand, um, we have to be able to be free to make immediate decisions that affect life and death without the scrutiny of somebody looking over our shoulder and going, wait, wait, wait. You know, I don't know anything about fire and EMS, but what are you doing? And funding is always an issue. Um, being able to get more money to buy equipment, to be able to pay people, um, to be able to do all of the other things to, for vehicles um, th that fire and EMS requires in addition to people is always a battle, whether it's in the United States and certainly as I understand it in Africa. And of course, safety is too. What can we do through advocacy um, to make sure that the people that do sign up, either volunteer or whether they get paid for this, and there's nothing wrong with that. I got a lot of friends, including some on this call, that, um, that, that are getting paid to do this. Tremendous respect for that. Um, but whether it's volunteer or paid, the safety of those individuals is really important and the degree to which your government can structure laws and regulations and infrastructure, um, plumbing and streets and water and, and all the other stuff is to provide safety for you. What you do is so important. Um, if we don't do that, um, the situation can go south really quick. Um, and I'm not ready for questions from you yet, so don't misunderstand the slide, but just being willing to ask questions of the people, the influencers, if you will, uh, the senators, the governor, people that are in a position to be able to um, to to influence stuff. What, what, how do you see the problem? How how do you what what are exact what are the problems in other areas that I'm not in and and just asking questions that are open ended so in, instead of saying well what are you going to do about this um, asking questions that really invite conversations and in that process encourage um, relationships what's the big picture what are the things that I'm not seeing how's this going to look um, in terms of legislative or governmental strategy? Are there other things that are happening that might help this cause? Or are there other things like budget cuts or like opposition or somebody politically doesn't like you? I have people that politically just don't like me sometimes and that's okay. Well, what's the big picture? What are the things that I'm not seeing? Uh, what's the urgency? What's the hurry? Is this something that we need to do now? We lost and I'm being hypothetical here, or I'm, I'm making up stories here, but um, we lost people in uh, a fire. So we've got to pass a law that says, no, you can't use water on a fire. Well, that doesn't make any sense. Or I want to pass a law that says that all fire trucks in my province have to be painted purple um, because I'm a sports fan and I, my team color is purple. So we got to paint them purple. Well, I don't know if that makes a lot of sense, but... Um, well, what's the urgency to that? And then the other, the last part is who are the opponents? Who are the people that are going to say, nope, ain't doing that, not happening, cost too much money, I don't like the idea, I don't like you, um, which is a piece of that. Who's going to oppose this? And knowing who's going to oppose it, how does this, how does this help us move the issue forward? Again, long game not just we're not calling plays um, we're not we're not winning the game necessarily a lot of times this is more about how do we win the season and then of course listening a uh, big thing for me um, the, the piece of that is really listening with intent so you're really focused good eye contact 
um, do the hardest thing that I do. Mm -hmm. Keep your mouth shut, Michael. Um, and just really listening intently to what that person's saying. And uh, again, that, it, that's not easy. Uh, sometimes it's exhausting, but really listening with intent builds that relationship. And you learn a lot of stuff when you're just really listening intently um, to the other stuff that's happening. Last couple of things, um, have, have stuff. Um, just invite them to your event. If you have something going on at the fire station or you're doing some training, maybe you're involving another department from another area. Maybe you're having an advocacy day. Maybe you're having a fire symposium day uh, or week as we did in Nairobi. Invite your elected officials to that, and I'm assuming elected or appointed officials, invite them to that event that builds a relationship and it helps them understand what you do. Invite them to your village. Give them a tour of your village and show them what you, what you have to work with and what you don't have to work with. Show them your fire department and again, show them what you have to work with and what you don't have to work with. And, and maybe also Invite them to a training. I hesitate to invite them to say to invite them to a fire because that can be a little crazy. Um, but if you have a training that kind of shows what a fire looks like, um, then bring them to that so that they see what you're doing and why it's important. If most people in in policy and governments really do have um, a heart that they want to help people, and having them interact not only with you. But the people of your village can can really make a difference in moving whatever issue you're trying to do, moving that that advocacy we're doing forward just by getting them immersed in what you're doing. Uh, last couple things. Uh, always, 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 always have an ask. You want to have that end game, that thing you're asking for in your mind. It doesn't mean you always put that out there right away. But you do want to make sure that that the time you have with officials, with um, people that can do things uh, in a government sense, um, you want to make sure you have an ask. Um, the, so, uh, Mr. Senator, Mr. Governor, Mrs. Uh, legislator, uh, Mrs. City Council person, making up words here, but um, did you have an ask? This is this is what we would like to see. Uh, telling your story, biting them to your community is really good, really important, but at least in the back of your mind, and a lot of times in the front, these are people that are very busy, uh, have a lot of things on their plate, typically, um, a lot of issues that they're trying to work on. So when you get that chance, make sure you have you 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 know what your ask is that hey this is what we need this is the end game this is the legislation this is the funding this is the issue that we need to work on um, and and in this context um, try to be as specific um, and as as possible if you can you know, sometimes it, it is really difficult it's a tough ask but um, the deg if you're able to, first of all, just say it uh, and then sort of let them know that this is possible because of one, two, three, and four, um, then you have a better chance of actually completing the whole purpose of ask uh, of advocacy, which is the stuff. Whether it's funding, whether it's add or remove a reg, whether it's you just want them, the first thing you're asking for is them to come see, um, to come to see um, a training or your village or the other people that are involved in the issue. Uh, again, that may be all you're asking, um, but and you may only be planting um, planting seeds, um, so you don't expect that seed you put in the ground to be able to produce fruit immediately. But it is really important um, that that seed that's in the ground uh, is nurtured and allowed to grow because it what you want out of that is not just to see the seed. You want to see that produce fruit. And that's always the end game of advocacy. OK, uh, I think um, that's about it. Um, 
I would invite two things. Um, the questions. Um, this is my favorite part of any presentation that I'm blessed to do. And that's the question. What did you get? What did you hear? What did you like? What did you not like? Um, other than the ugly guy that had to present it and, and being forced to look at him for um, for 40 minutes or whatever it's been. So please, I welcome questions. Um, and again, uh, I can't tell you how much uh, I'm blessed by the opportunity to teach. I've been sort of bragging to all my friends that I'm going to teach to some students in Africa and they're, ooh, and ah, that's really cool. And um, so thank you and God bless. Uh, and I look forward to questions. Okay, at this point in time, we'll open up the uh, floor to some questions. Uh, if you've got any, you can uh, raise your hand, give me a moment and we'll let you uh, unmute yourselves and uh, we can go with some questions. There has been a thought-provoking session. And, uh, it's it's really interesting how you bring the advocacy piece across. I've actually learned about uh, basically telling your story and uh, bringing sense and uh, getting people to understand what you do, even as you either your intent can be funding or your intent can be reaching a certain goal. So I've really gotten a, a totally different feel on today's uh, class. Thank you, Jose. Um, and I thank you. I really appreciate that. Jose, for me, tell me a little bit more about, um, in the context of advocacy, what are the issues that, that you see on the ground um, in Africa, did did I allude to those well enough, or are there some things that uh, some pieces maybe that I'm not seeing? No, you've given up it from a, a whole context of it. Um, how we tell our story is different, you know. How we communicate is different uh, because so much of our issues are. Um, are affected uh, politically, or they move uh, when it is uh, politically supported. Um, we have to tell our story different. So, you've given uh, as you given a situation like you've given meat to the bone that we have. The bone structure is there. People know that they need to have uh, a certain conversation going. Uh, to our direction, but then they what we what we lacked was what flesh do we put on this existing bone? Yeah, you know, like currently we are having a bill that's supposed to go to a second reading that is going to support firefighters, whereby firefighters are going to be recognized as a cadre, as a profession. So how do we get to advocate for that? a particular bill in regards to our members of parliament and also to our local members of parliament. Yeah, so this is actually a piece that for me, I will actually go back again to the videos, the YouTube video and get to see, hmm, how can I help my member of parliament and what he needs to say and support us even in regards to that bill. Because it did go through the other time because of quorum, there are no enough people to actually support it. And those are the members of parliament. Hmm. So how do we get this time to have those members of parliament attend and uh, speak to our regard? Um, great point. And I, I really appreciate what you said. It helps me understand both the similarities between the states and advocacy in the states and, and the advocacy that um, that is different, significantly different uh, in some places in Africa. 
Jose, if I may, let me ask a question. Do you, generally speaking, do you or any of the other people on the call, do they have really the opportunity to 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 be able to interact directly uh, with many of the elected officials, or is that more restricted as well? It's quite difficult to get them to get them uh, <laughs> beyond the ground. It's it's quite difficult to have them uh, participate. But then there are mechanisms that you can get to reach them, but it's not as easy as uh, it should be, hmm. because uh, most people, most members of parliament think that when you are approaching them, it's an a handout you're going to get. You're go you're coming to ask, hmm. and maybe it is a conversation that you want to engage them with. It's 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 uh, an engagement you want them to have with you and the community. So always it's more like they have a feast already like, no, I'm, I don't have anything, you know? So it's not as easy to get access to them, but yes, there are ways that we can get access to, to the members of parliament. Thank you. Mustafa, go ahead. Yes. Your mic, uh, your mic, Mustafa, brother. Oh, oh, it is on. Just yeah, speak yeah. much louder. Sorry, brother. All right. Yeah, my point was just coming directly to what you just mentioned in terms of meeting more important, influential people in the government. It's the same problems that you have just stated are more like the same like here in Malawi. You know, most fire brigades like in Malawi are under local councils. Now, there are channels that have been put in place whereby you just can't go directly to say, I'm going to meet such a, such an important person just to advocate for fire issues without passing through the normal channels. Like in our case, we have to go through our chief fire officer. Then the chief fire officer will have to, do, to go to the director of engineering. The director of engineering has to inform the chief executive so much so that there should be a clear way through which you can meet the most influential people in the legislation. So it becomes more, more discouraging for one to start going through an advocacy to that say, to that, to that, to that extent, whereby you know somewhere in the way someone will block you to go to get through that. Um great point. Um, and and I, I really appreciate that because that helps me better understand especially it. when it comes to meeting influential people in the government. But to whosoever we meet like the public, people are very busy with things that they I don't understand because you would go there just to inform them about the dangers, about safety and whatever fire prevention measures that would help them live safely in the communities. But you find that the communities are not interested to, to listen to you. We don't understand reasons why, only unless there is an incident that has affected them heavily, is when they welcome you to say, no, we really need to learn more from, from the firefighters. That's one other aspect that gives, that gives us an, a discouragement to say, maybe for some reason we're losing out on our time and other things. But because you mentioned in your presentation things to do with passion, the same passion drives us towards we just have to do more. Maybe one day or the other we shall reap the fruits. So there is more to be done like here in Malawi, more more, more so in many other countries in Africa. Uh, but I know with, with the, such kind of uh, presentations that you have given us, we are being motivated to do more because we know one day we shall reap the fruits. Uh, it was quite a wonderful presentation, very, very, very motivating. That um, at the point of one giving up, he would be moved by the presentation to say, no, never give up. You mentioned about um, getting the understanding of, of whatever you want to go and advocate for. Yes, you, you go deep into the understanding. You make a lot of research, find more information to share to people. But you 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 find that the the people you are advocating for, they are way below far in terms of the technical ways, ways that we use when we want to do the presentations. Yeah. So that's one other challenge that we face because people don't want to understand what fire is. Because for one to advocate for fire or safety, 
one has to be able to understand the real definition of what you're telling them. Failure to do that, they find everything useless. Even if it comes to just sharing us, sharing them our, our emergency lines. You find people listening to you, but they're not taking any notes about the numbers. One day or the other, they will start calling the police to say, we won't fire numbers when you two, three days ago, you were just in their locality, sharing the same message. Yeah. But I know with time, people will get there. Through these trainings, we're being motivated big time. Thank you very much, sir. Oh, Mustafa. Um, yeah. Mike, I would encourage you to have him as the next speaker on advocacy. He he really um, summed up um, what I said in in a, in a few more more simple words. Uh, the only thing I would echo with what you said is is one, and that's not unlike um, it. It is in America. Um, we, we we talk um, sometimes in advocacy about it's going to take a big ugly, um, whether we're talking about manpower, or funding, or regulations. Um, it sometimes people just you just don't think about the fire department or the emergency medical services until you have a big ugly and then oh, oh wait a minute where's everybody at and what are we doing and how come it didn't be in? Um, uh, the the encouragement I would give you is it, it is kind of the same it's um, to your point it's 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 a long term con not constant but just every opportunity you get just taking small steps and keep working and just keep working and just keep working. And I use the analogy of a, it's not a play. It's not a game. It's a season. And maybe even that's not correct. It's not, it's not just a season. It's a, it, it's a whole long-term over seasons and seasons and seasons. And, um, but Mustafa, I just, I can't encourage enough what you said that, that everything, um, if, if anybody here is going to go back and listen to the videos, Forget about what I said. Just listen to what Mustafa said, and that's really the heart of what good advocacy says. Whether it's in Malawi or whether it's in Arlington, Nebraska, um, the, the the details are different. No question. I don't want to disrespect that, but but the essence of just being tenacious and just getting in there and keeping up the fight, just keeping up the fight, is is just so important. Good work, sir. Okay. Yeah, and at again, point, uh, hold on just a second, Mustafa, and we'll come back to you. Let me just wrap things, the formal portion of our training up with a big thank you today uh, for Michael for coming and sharing uh, his perspective on advocacy with us, and also for all of you for taking the time out of your schedules and uh, spending your, your hard earned money uh, on those bundles to be here with us. We really appreciate that and the efforts that you all are taking to better yourselves so that you can better serve your community. Uh, just a reminder that uh, we're here every week. Uh, we've got plenty of seats, uh, so be sure to share this with uh, any of your friends, uh, co-workers uh, that you think might benefit from today's training. So big thank you to all, uh, and we hope to see you all again next week.